J. Cole kisses Kung Fu Kenny's converse. I didn't see this coming, y'all. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this coming. I did not see this coming. Let me get this shot. I got my shot up my camera. What is light? I didn't see this coming. J. Cole bow out. How you start some shit, talk some shit, Y'all been going back and forth doing microaggressions for years. And as soon as the conversation gets overt, as soon as it goes from microaggression, as soon as it goes from subtext, as soon as it goes from subtext to headlines, you apologize. I'm going to tell y'all right now, I ain't with it. I ain't with it. I ain't with it. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to let y'all talk. I might have some of y'all call in later on, too. But let me tell you right now, I ain't with it. I don't. I ain't with it. No. No. I'm not with it. I'm not one of those, we just need to all come together kind of Negro. Hell no. I'm a mature person that says, hey, look, people can have beefs, and that's fine. Everybody ain't got to be examples all the time to everybody. You niggas need to learn how to lead yourselves anyway. And stop looking at celebrities uh, on how to live your life. Hell, I learned that lesson years ago. I learned that lesson as a kid. I learned that lesson when I was 10 years old. When Magic Johnson got AIDS when I was 10, and they said, oh, Magic got AIDS. I was like, oh, shit. Celebrities ain't perfect. That's what I learned. All right. Shit, my, my daddy better than these niggas anyway. And I still feel that way. Shout out on the phone with my dad earlier today. My father's still my number one hero. Fuck these celebrities. But a lot of you niggas still want to live your life vicariously through celebrities, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, no, I don't believe in putting celebrities to this ungodly standard of not being, of having to live these Puritan lives. I don't believe in that shit. Cause it'd be you same niggas talking about these, y'all need, they, these, these two celebrities need to forgive each other. And you ain't forgave your cousin because for, for taking $25 at the last family reunion. And then, they, you know, they, they on hard time. They didn't pay you back. Forgive them. You got motherfucker. You don't fell out with lifelong friends over two hundred dollars. Talking about some some celebrity need to forgive you, hypocrite ass nigga. The hypocrite don't be the celebrity. The hypocrite be the people demanding shit of the celebrity. Those be the primary hypocrites. The people that want celebrities to do everything that they wouldn't do in their own goddamn life. Them is the hypocrites. Celebrities is just regular ass people doing a whole bunch of dumb ass shit. So, off top, I'm talking about from that point of view. On another level, just because two people are going at it in music don't mean they beefing. This is music. And I'm going to bring all this stuff down as we go. I'm just laying the foundation of where we're going to go. All right? This is just the foundation. Everything that I'm saying right now, we're going to get into detail over the next hour. Okay? Y'all know me. I can run my goddamn mouth for a long time. Salute to the chat room. I have a... I don't even have my chat room up. I don't even, are you niggas even in the chat room? Hold on. Where my chat room at? I don't even see you niggas. Well, I'm going to get to y'all chat room. I don't even see y'all. But I'm going to get to y'all when I finish this opening. And then we're going to get into it. So, point number two I'm going to make is competition has always been one of the things that made our music great. And the competition starts in the church. And by the way, I'm filming, I'm actively filming uh, episode two of It's Bigger Than Hip Hop, the Black American Music Family Tree. You guys definitely gonna wanna support that. Go to thewanb.com. I definitely wanna cross, uh, get, get some more money so we can finish uh, filming that up. But the next episode is gonna be on the church. 
And what I'm about to do is I'm not not to give you too much too many details, but we're going to get into the church's role in a, a popular American music in our music. So when it comes to competition, make no mistake about it. The competition starts in the church because every church that has a good band got two or three drummers, two or three cats that can play the bass, two or three cats that can play the keys, two or three women that can sing lead, lead soprano, lead alto, and they always duking it out. Two or three altos and tenors. It's always competition. Then once you beat the competition out at your church, you go around and you have re revivals where it's going to be other churches playing. And y'all coming for each other's necks. And for that, I have I have firsthand in for, I have, uh, in, in, this, in this documentary, I got firsthand conversation with the great producer, Mr. James Carmichael. Well, he's going to be breaking a lot of this stuff down about the competition in the church. And then when it comes to blues, jazz, funk, disco, whatever it is, we, we've always had Battle of the Bands. We've always had cutting contests. We've always had in comedy roast sessions. It's part of what we do to make sure we got the right person out there representing us when we face the world with our music and with our art. So we're going to get into that. But before we get into it, what I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to need you to share this. I'm going to need you I'm, I'm going to need you to share this go to dewanb.com. Um well first off, go take the link from this and share this all across your social media. If you're on YouTube, share this. If you're on Twitter, welcome. YouTube, Facebook, whatever uh platform you're watching on, I welcome you right now. We about to get into it. I'm going to need y'all <clears throat> That's my, my documentary. If you haven't seen my documentary, it's bigger than hip hop. The Black American Music Family Tree. Watch it now on YouTube because it is about to be taken down. Okay? So have, uh, I'm going to keep it up for the rest of this month, but we're about to take it down. Uh, so watch the, the free uh, pilot episode that we put out so you can see where we're going. But go to dewanb.com right now um, and register your email address so you can have announcements. When I uh, drop my documentaries, when I drop information go to the right now so we know because these social media platforms like all right right now on instagram they're they just stopping me from they froze me out from responding on ig so you know how that works so appreciate the uh this I mean, let's cross 10 grand to get to this first uh person uh this this next episode out all right go to the and that's where you get all my shit go to my shop you can get my Black American Music Family Tree t-shirt that I have on right now. You can get all that shit at DeWanB.com. Black people don't owe anybody anything but an ass whooping. This shirt stays selling. I just got some more back up there. This shit sold out for a little while. We back in business, all right? All that's on DeWanB.com, Breakthrough Cards. And you don't want to bookmark BreakthroughCards.com because... As we get to the end of this, I think we're going to read Kendrick and we're going to read J. Cole and we're going to see what's going on in their cards. All right. But let's get into it. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's. There we go. So let's get into it. Gotta have my, uh, gotta have my, let me, let me turn my, my preaching music on. There we go. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So the question is, did J. Cole do the right thing? Uh, I still can't see the chat room. Hold on, hold on. This ain't gonna work. This is not gonna work. I need to see the chat room, yo. Hold on, let, uh, excuse my rudeness. I need to see my chat room. Shit, the fuck is going on here, yo? Let's, what is going on here? I need to see the chat room. 
I need to see the chat room. What the fuck? Oh, y'all know I got a book on Amazon. It's called Tell It Like It Is, The Art of Loving Communication. I mean, forgetting to tell you niggas, I'm an author too. What the fuck is my chat room? There we go. I see you niggas. I see you dirty motherfuckers. What's up, chat room? What's up, Quan Patterson and over on X? Oh, shit. I can get X, uh, uh I can get the X, uh, comments over here now, too. What's up, uh, Vaping Fast Break, Baltimore Bully, Big Pontiac, OG Bags. Hey, Larry, you see this, nigga? You see that, motherfucker? What's up, Jamaica Johnson? Oh, yeah, Drake ain't responding. See, look. So, let's get into it. You had Kendrick, and I talked about it before, you had... It all started, this, this this break down to where it's all started because it's a lot of people that don't know what's going on. So let's break it down to you who don't know what's going on. For the last 10 plus years, there's been a quiet beef between Kendrick and J. Cole and Drake. There's been a quiet, subtle jab thrown between the three with Kendrick being the most overt on verses like his control verse he did a few years ago. So it's been a passive aggressive sort of, uh, I won't even say beef. I will say gentlemanly music rivalry. Let me stop you. Let me, let me first, I'm gonna say it has not been a beef because I genuinely believe Kendrick Lamar respects J. Cole as a man and as an artist. And same the same with Drake and same with uh, all of them. I think they all respect one another as men and as artists. I really feel that they do. But in rap, in hip hop, there's a culture of competition. And in that culture of competition, you call out other artists. But think about this. Artists really only call out other artists that they respect. You only throw subs at other artists that you respect. And because hip hop is from the streets, just like funk is from the streets and doo-wop music is from the streets and jazz is from the streets, there is a competition to decide who's the best. The first competition you have is who's the best on your block. The first thing you want to do, because there is so much talent in our community and in our culture, you want to be the best person in your block. And then after you conquer your block, you conquer it through battle. And after you conquer your block, you conquer your neighborhood. Who's the best in this neighborhood? <clears throat> I live on 57th. He live on 64th. Let's go head up. Snoop has plenty of infamous stories about, not infamous, but famous stories about when he was coming up, people, him hearing about corrupt and then having a battle corrupt, you know, for the title. And to get the who's going to be the best in Long Beach. Then, when you go from the best in your city, best in your town, you go to best in your region, best in the country. But there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. And part of the reason is it's real money out there. And one thing about think about us as black folks culturally. Let's just go back to who we are as a culture. <clears throat> what did your mama say? Hold on one second. Okay, that's something else. I thought that was an emergency. Um there is Chat room, where was I? Thought that, I, thought, I, thought, I thought I had an emergency. I, I have some stuff going on in one of my buildings, so I apologize, chat room, for breaking my concentration. But I, 
I'm a busy man. I'm sorry. Chat room, can you tell me where I was? I, lo I lost my train of thought, please. Somebody in the chat room. Um, one of my mods or somebody, or not mods. Um, oh, what's up, Tony Baker? My nigga Tony up in here. So, let's, uh, I got another, another salute to Tony Baker. That's my dog. But, um, so, I'll go, I'll go back to who you are culturally. Our parents, our mom. What did your mom say? Your grandmama say? Don't make me look bad out there. Watch, watch how you represent yourself when you go out there amongst them people. That's a cultural thing for us. Watch how you act. I'm not talking about what's, what's been destroyed. We spend too much time focusing on the destroyed aspects of our culture. Let's spend some time balancing, because I know our culture's been destroyed in a lot of ways. I, I get it, I get it, I get it. But we gotta talk about the aspects of our culture that are still intact, because, because we still have a lot of our aspects and culture that are still intact. I know because I was raised in a culturally rich family, and so were a lot of you when I talked to you out there in the environment. So we have this thing about being the rep best representation of ourselves when we go to the other side of town. So when it comes to our music, we can't be bad and play for white folks back in the days of slavery. Back in the days of, uh, of, of, of Jim Crow, post-slavery. When we send our musicians during these times out to the world, they have to be the best representation of us. And the only way to get the best representation of us is to compete. That's how it was in jazz. They call it cutting contests. Competition is breeded and brought out some of the best music. All of our best music has come through competition. Miles Davis was in competition with Dizzy Gillespie. When Dizzy Gillespie was the king of the trumpet and bebop in the 1950s, late 1940s, into the 50s. Miles Davis lost that competition to Dizzy. He couldn't keep up. When Charlie Park, when Dizzy would play with Charlie, they would answer, they would call an answer. Miles couldn't keep up. But what happened out of that was Miles found out, Miles Davis found out who he was. He realized through competition he's not Dizzy Gillespie. But in realizing he's not Dizzy Gillespie, he discovered Miles Davis. Moved to LA, created Birth of the Cool. And many more other genres moving forward. Competition is what makes it to where we know who the best of the best of the best is. And we also learn another key lesson from competition. Just because you didn't win don't mean you're bad. It just means you got to work on something. Culturally, in, 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 in blues joints, in St. Louis and New York and Kansas City. And when somebody came in, they was a little bit too hot. <laughs> when they came in on that too hot shit, somebody who was the shit had to come and cut them down. Like, no, 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 humble yourself. But here's the beautiful thing about our culture. After... 
the OG humbles you, he's going to build you back up. Albert King had to go through this in, in Memphis, Muddy Waters. All of the greats got stories of getting washed. It was funny. I was, I was talking to my father-in-law just last week. We were t and, and I recorded this conversation that we had about uh, music, and I was asking him about times he's had he's gotten like basically got washed, and he was saying how he had to play this in this on his jazz at his jazz joint on Central Avenue back in the day, back in the '60s, and the drummer used to play with Count Basie, and the drummer used to do things and play at tempos that would purposely get him off, and at one point in the show. Somebody else came and got on the piano and he never got back on. And talk, and the, but he also talked about how when he became a producer at Motown, he brought that drummer in to record some sessions that he knew that drummer couldn't play and got his ass up. Music is a whole bunch of microaggressions and, and shit. But understand this. Out of all of that comes... Music. A wash, a clothes don't get washed by just clean water and soap. You need an agitator. Something to shuffle the water up to wash it out. J. Cole ain't done. J. Cole ain't finished. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. I won't listen to his music because I because I never listened to his music. It's it's been of the sleepy variety to me. I liken J. Cole's music to warm milk for an infant. You know? I liken J. Cole's music to eating some barbecue at, at 11 p.m. You're going right to sleep when it's over with. You know, I'm not a fan of his music, although I do think he's a, a he's an exceptional artist. He's just not my taste. You know, if you like J. Cole, I'm not going to argue with you. And that's how it is. For, and that's what a lot of you dumb niggas need to learn. Just because somebody don't like an artist you like don't mean you got to argue. You whole ass niggas got to stop being weird. Just because somebody says something about an artist you like that you don't agree with. It don't mean your panties got to get in a bunch, nigga. Stop being a hoe. We could, we could disagree about artists. And that goes into this whole thing about, about what's going on with Kendrick and, 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 and J. Cole. This goes into what's talking about this, these two. You can go at each other artistically, competitively, and still be gentlemen, still be cool. It's competition. Competition makes you great. See, growth is not taking competition personal. Growth is understanding that competition is part of the game and you use that competition to measure yourself. You use competition to measure yourself. So, with that being said, Competition comes your way, you t 
turn into that shit, you face it. Don't be a hoe. Don't run. Even if you lose, you learn from the loss. And you grow from the loss. I saw a video with Kobe Bryant talking about a game that he didn't score when he was 12. He didn't score like for almost a whole season. And he talked about how he said he sucked. But that made him start when he was 12. But that made him start getting better. The part Kobe don't tell you is his 12-year-old ass is playing against adults. <laughs> but he used that as a measuring stick to get better. If you get into an issue with somebody, if you get into it, that's the time to measure yourself and to grow because this is why that's so important. Why am I having this conversation, black people? This is why I say this. Because we live in a vicious world. And I'm not saying always don't back down. There is always a time to back down. What I'm speaking about right now is in a competition of rap. And if you're in the kind of field that's competitive. Now, if you're a garbage truck worker, don't be getting no garbage truck battles trying to outrace other garbage trucks. Nigga, you gonna kill somebody. Nigga, if you're a registered nurse, don't be getting into a battle with other registered nurses trying to figure out who can poke holes in motherfuckers' arms faster. Be reasonable. This is a conversation about if this is your field. Rap, especially someone like a J. Cole, you've been throwing subs at homie for a long time. Let's keep everything in context here. I'm not saying go around picking fight, picking fights. And I'm not saying you should fight every battle. I'm not saying that either. But I'm saying if you've been throwing subs and now the battle's at your front door, nigga, this is rap. Don't apologize. You ain't got nothing to apologize for, J. Cole, nigga. You ain't got to apologize for no you, 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 L L Lamar hit you, with a, hit you with a jab. You hit him with a jab back. Neither of y'all threw knockout blows. I think Kendrick shit was a, was, a, was a stiff jab. Yours was a soft jab. But they were both jabs nonetheless. Hey, what you apologizing for, man? That's my issue. Niggas be apologizing too much. It's, he's right, Alma Dixon. It's, it's witty wordplay. It's friendly competition. <laughs> Don't be sorry, ho. Be careful. Yeah, for Friday. <laughs> Right. Right. But that's what we're talking about. You know, it's a context. It's a rap battle. Now, again, don't go having secretary battles at work. Don't do that. Let's, let's be reasonable here. It's all about context. And it's also about, look, man, this is, this, is, this is music. Remember this, music is at the highest level. Music is the highest level of intelligence. You know, it's, it's at the highest standard. And in these battles, in music, you get to measure yourself. And get better. Or not. Or just lose. And walk on. So 
Who gives a fuck if you lost a rap battle? And that's all, that's for us as a listener. We got to be mature. If if your favorite person, somebody you like, lose a battle, then they lost a battle. That don't stop you from buying their music. It's just friendly, witty competition. That's all it is. It's not personal. That's culturally how we are. Remember, remember, remember Harlem Nights? Don't take that. After this ass whooping, I don't want no hard feelings. If I said, man, I said, cold through a, a mean hook, then took a knee. <laughs> right. But he, I'm going to tell you what was funny about this. What's funny about this is, God damn it, Suge Knight done responded from prison. <laughs> I want y'all to hear this real quick. Jim Lamar, Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick. You the only motherfucker with a cigar. Say code. You both say what you mean, you mean what you say. To beat the death, you got to beat the death. This is a contact sport. As we just say back in the day, if you don't want to be a gangster rapper, go be R&B. West Coast, stand up. It's a victory. Kendrick Lamar is a real motherfucker from the hub. He really from there. And everybody's going to ride with him. J. Cole, with that attitude, we'll still be in slavery. Remember, to be the best, you got to beat the best. <laughs> this nigga should have said, with that attitude, we still be in slavery. Oh! <laughs> Just like it. When I said what I said about Puffy at the Social Awards, Puffy would have took his tail instead of getting on him. It would have been a disappointment to my people because he would have been out to be a bitch in front of everyone. But one looked bad, we all look bad. We all got to remember that. When Kobe Bryant played Michael Jordan in the All-Star game, Kobe showed up and played his best game ever. So we don't got time for no pussy shit. I'm going to tell you like I tell my son. If you act like a pussy, people going to treat you like a pussy. And you know what happens to a pussy? A pussy gets fucked. This is a contact sport. Contact sport. You can't handle the field of tackle. Down a flag. Kenji Lamar. Woo. West Coast. Yeah, I'm smiling. Kenji, I know I'm old now, but you motherfucking got some fives on that motherfucker. I'm going to put on this all eyes on me and do 100 burpees, 100 push ups, shit. I'm going to work out all day. Like I said before. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Just before I get into what Suge said, just the fact that you got a nigga in prison commenting on rap beef is motherfucking hilarious to me. Ah! <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Well, well, are we living in... Are we living in, like, bizarro world? Like, what's going on here? What's what's going on here? What is going on here? We living in a world where niggas in prison got comments about real-life activities. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> wow, that's just funny. But Suge has a good point. It's a lot of apology. All, all that rap, all that black folks, black men are always apologizing for, for our greatness and who we are and for, for, for stepping on toes. Man, that shit got to stop, man. Fuck all that. Apologize, to, apologize for what? For what? Just let it go. If you don't want to, all right, you put your song out there. You don't want to, you don't want to respond again. Just let it go. Do like Drake. Just don't respond. But apologizing, God damn, niggas be looking weak. <laughs> Somebody said, "Shout out to J Cole for doing grown man shit." Man, sit the fuck down. 
This is music. Fuck out of here. You wouldn't have hip hop if it weren't for competition. That that shit you call it grown man shit, there would be no rap if that if 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 if, if that was the standard in our music. If the standard was oh, no. The music never would have got good enough to even hit the radio. It's a cause and effect relation to everything. Competition be, breeds great music. Motown was a competitive environment. You gonna say they was immature? Eddie Kendricks and Marvin Gaye used to go at it. Nigga, do you know that Joe Tex, I forgot the name of the song, but Joe Tex got a song about sleeping with James Brown's girl. Do you know that? I'm going I'm to find a song. I'm going to play it on my next Instance and Ashtrays. Joe Tex got a song where he's talking about James Brown sleeping with James Brown's woman. You know that? Out of that competition, you get the funk. Because when somebody comes at you, you got to go harder. Should I go back to what Ice Cube said about Easy e uh, after he did no Vaseline, he said he saw Easy, and he was like, "What?" I remember Easy. I, I remember hearing the whole interview with Easy. Easy was like, "What?" They asked Easy what he what he felt when uh, when Ice Cube dropped no Vaseline. And Easy was like, "You know, then, damn, he got us." But it wasn't when they saw each other again. It was like whatever. Somebody said, "Yeah, back in the day, man, ain't shit changed." They was getting paid off of it back then, too. Nigga, we live in the internet generation. Do you know Kendrick and J. Cole both can make the most money off of this by their merch? Doing their own merch? They can flip it and make their own goddamn money. Them blogs are going to make money regardless. The fuck you talking about? Like, I hear what you're saying, brother, but them folks getting paid, they get paid off everything we do anyway, so? Like, when... <laughs> Since when has that stopped us from doing anything, them getting paid off of it? Like, for real. Let's be reasonable here. Let's be reasonable. That's a that's 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 a cop out. And that's what respect Akil Smith. Akili Smith, my bad. We got that's the old football player name. That's what respect to you, but no, I don't buy that. Or somebody somebody had was in my Twitter mention saying that um, a few hours ago. They was talking about, well, other people are going to get paid. Yeah, they get paid anyway. Yeah, they get paid. At least in today's internet, you can create a t-shirt, a piece of merchandise to where you can get paid too. Ain't no grown man shit. Nigga, this is music, man. Because if this, this reason why I, I don't buy that, this is some grown man shit. Nigga, when, in the days of Motown, it was competitive who was going to get that record to the, to the, uh, what record made, what, what song made it to the record? You had Team Norman Whitfield and Team Hal Davis cutting tracks on the Temptations at the same time. And whoever had the best shit won. Even now, you got beefs all day. Nigga, we, we ain't stupid. What? There's only been one beef that... The, the, okay, the Tupac and Biggie beef. That was... Those, those fans was flamed by the magazine. Okay, that was 30 years ago. Thirty years ago, hell, as deep as Fifty Cent and Ja Rule's beef is, they still both living. Yeah, that you're right. That grown man shit narrative is so goddamn corny. This is music, y'all. This is this isn't a beef over. Somebody uh, took the last drink and I paid for the bottle. This ain't no shit like that. 
this ain't somebody stealing somebody's gal. This ain't somebody cheating somebody, wronging somebody. That's different. We got to be smart enough to understand context. This is entertainment, man. This is music. Kendrick didn't disrespect that man's kids. He didn't say nothing about that dude's mama. He didn't disrespect J. Cole as a man. He took zero personal shots at Jason uh, J. Cole. J. Cole took no shots at Kendrick as a human. No shots at Kendrick as a man. They kept it music. The fuck is you niggas talking about? Yeah, confusing street beef for art. We ain't stupid as a people. Look. Right. Them folks get paid. You buy your groceries at Walmart. Stop it. Look. Them folks is getting paid through my internet bill right now. The fact that I'm talking to you guys and the fact that you're listening to me means them folks are getting paid. Fuck out of here. Yeah, somebody's in my Twitter and mentions talking about, I'm like, what are you talking about? What? It's the music, man. It's the music. Niggas get too, too goddamn black. Goddamn. I love, I'm, I'm pro-black nigga, but I'm a human being first. As humans, we are both profound and profane. Yeah, since it came out, yeah. We are both profound and profane. We have high sides and we have low sides. I'm somebody that I embrace it all. I embrace my high and my low. And I and I and I'm accepting of other people's. We ain't all prophets and perfect. It's a damn shame that Doc, our great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King had to hide the fact that he smoked cigarettes because the population is too fucking stupid to understand that and the man under that much pressure, he got to have some kind of fucking relief. But we, 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 we got a populace that's so goddamn dumb and superficial and judgmental that they'll cut off a whole man. They would have cut that whole man's message off had they known he smoked cigarettes. That's how fucking stupid we are as a people. And I, for one, don't believe in buying into the stupidity of humanity. I believe in appealing to those who like to at least think and use their brains and be a little bit more compassionate because we need people that we listen to, too. Everybody ain't got to appeal to the lowest common denominator. That's the problem with the world. Everybody's just been in this rush to appeal to the lowest common denominator. Oh, we just need to come together to show that black men don't beef. And then you that, that same person that say that, they'll turn around and support Jay-Z, somebody who's turned around and done nothing but stifle people's careers, his whole goddamn career. They'll turn around and beef with other niggas and then tell you, man, we, the celebrities need to come together to show that black men don't beef. No, black men do beef. And we always going to beef, nigga. Everybody going to beef. It's, human, it's humanity, motherfucker. Anybody get me to not be a human just so I can appease some sensitive ass nigga's feelings. Fuck out of here. Why I got to be less of a human? Why well, I gotta stifle my humanity because some dumb nigga, because some nigga in his fucking forties is looking for a role model. Fuck out my face. I gotta stifle. I gotta not be human because some nigga in his fifties want a role model to look up to. Look, black men don't need to always be beefing all the goddamn time. <laughs> no, it's niggas out there who know that we can fucking have a friendly competition and then go back to the business of attacking white supremacy and beating it the best way we know how. It's 
fuck out of here. Hell yeah, Kendra should Kendra should finish that nigga. Yeah, you yeah you apologize. This nigga, nigga Kendrick need to Bruce Leroy his ass. Nigga, Kendrick need to come out with his next song, Kung Fu Kenny, who's the master. But this time, Leroy ain't gonna come back, ain't gonna get the glow. That's what Kendrick need to do. Kendrick need to come in. I got some real for your ass in these hands, Leroy. Somebody said, who are we trying to look good for? That was my question. I don't believe it. You look good for yourself. You represent yourself. I don't believe in going around talking about some, oh, we need to show white folks. We need, we need to show people. We ain't a monolith, nigga. We have good niggas and we got ain't shit niggas. We got black folks I want to be around. There's a whole lot of niggas I'll never fuck with. Fuck out of here. I appreciate the super chat, Famously Blacker. Appreciate that. You're right, John David. Cole been talking crazy. He been throwing all kind of uh, subs at Kendrick. That's nothing. That's nothing. You let's that, let's let's go to the next level. Of this you don't get points for throwing rocks and hiding your hands, and then playing victim when it comes back to you. I'm tired of victim playing niggas. It's too many niggas out there who do a bunch of dumb shit and say a bunch of dumb shit. Be subbing people, talking shit about people, and then a minute, a little bit of heat come back their way. Oh no, oh no, me, no, they was attacking me. <laughs> we need to get them kind of niggas out the paint. But let's get into it. Why is J. Cole like this? Why is he like this? Let's get into his cards. These are J. Cole's cards. Oh, I see something already. Oh, I see something already, y'all. For those of you on quick commercial break, for those of you who don't know what well, this is what I'm about to do right now, I'm about to get into my mystic art of cardology where I read people's personalities through their birth date, and through your birth date, I can find your card. And your card tells me about your personality, aspects of your personality, how you communicate, how you interact with the world, your internal discipline, and different aspects of your personality. I do it through the art of cardology. And if you want to know further what I'm getting ready to do right here, if you're new around here, go to BreakthroughCards.com. That's what you can do. And then you can scroll down. And you can find your birthday at the bottom. Go to your birthday and find your card. All right? So right now, let's get into... I'm a, we're going to do Kendrick's card. And we're going to do J. Cole's card. This is about to be... Yo, I see you off top. This is about to be an interesting read. Actually, before I go... Let me turn this fucking fan on. It's warm here in LA. Hold on. Hold on, MFers. Let me, um, we about to, we about to go into this card reading in one second, but what I need to do foist, what I need to do foist is throw this fan on real quick. Hold on one second, John. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold on one second.
Oof. Nigga, I had to turn thine fan on, nigga. Shit. Alright. So this is J. Cole's card. He's a queen of clubs. And the reason why this is gonna be interesting is because this is these are Kendrick's cards, and Kendrick is a king of clubs. We got the same birthday, so I could break down Kendrick's personality in a lot of ways. <clears throat> but the reason why this is so interesting is Kendrick is J. Cole's shadow card. Ain't a shadow card, and y'all know who been watching me a lot, a lot more recently. I've been spending a lot more time breaking down to you guys what shadow cards are. A shadow is the person that's you know who you are, but you don't know who you are. That person on the side that's that other side of us. So in a lot of ways, Kendrick represents J. Cole's shadow self. Hmm. That's interesting. But J. Cole is a, is a queen of clubs. And I often find men under this card, it's tough for men to exist as queen of clubs. I've noticed that. And again, Queen of Clubs is one of the hardest cards for me to read. <clears throat> I know a bunch of Queen of Clubs. And I don't know any two Queen of Clubs who are anything alike. I know like five or six different Queen of Clubs. Like really know them. And none of them are alike. None of them. Um, but see the Queen of Clubs is the is the is the lawmaker it's but it's also a very petty card it could be very petty it deals with pettiness uh, oftentimes that's one thing i do see with a lot of queen of clubs they they get in petty fights and usually oftentimes those petty fights are with themselves he has a saturn card of the seven hearts that's where his emo. That's where that emo. That's where a lot of male queen of clubs have an issue. That seven heart Saturn, because it requires to. It requires you to lean in, uh, to your feminine side and a, and a more of a feminine approach to discipline and regulation. And what a lot of men don't understand is feminine doesn't mean woman. Feminine and woman are two different things. We all have masculine and feminine aspects. All of us. Masculine and the feminine is just roles, it's, you know, like I said before, a plug in a socket. You got your plugs and you got your sockets. Sockets are feminine. It's just a role. And, but J. Cole, with him, have, that's where, you know, you see the more passive, a lot of queen of clubs are more passive and more cutting and more calculating. I will tell you this, a lot of queen of clubs don't like that direct conflict. They're more subversive with their conflict because of that seven hearts. That seven hearts will cut you, but it ain't going to cut you to your face. It's going to work around, and it's going to cut you by a thousand pieces. That's one thing about the queen of clubs. The queen of clubs is, it doesn't directly come at you. Now, it will cut your head off if it's pushed there, but it, it, queen of clubs would rather fight in a roundabout way. King of clubs, however, that's Kendrick. King of Clubs, them niggas want the direct fade. Kendrick Lamar, King of Clubs. Steve Coakley, King of Clubs. Malcolm X, King of Clubs. King of Clubs niggas want that direct fade. I'm a King of Clubs. I don't do passive aggressive. I don't like fighting nobody or nothing like that. But if it's going to be some comps some words, let's put it out there. Let's not do these around about I don't respect it. I like I don't respect I don't re, like that's all that almost gets under my skin sometimes. It used to, I should say. It doesn't get under my skin anymore because I, I understand now that I'm older that people have everybody got different ways. But when I was in my twenties, ooh, passive aggressiveness would get so under my skin. If you wanted to throw me off back then, shit. That used to be a weakness of mine. But it's a weakness of mine that I've since worked on, and now it's a strength dealing with passive aggressive people. It's now a strength of mine. But that shit wasn't strength ten years ago. I had to get my, I had to bump my head a few times dealing with passive aggressive queen of clubs people. As a matter of fact, 
the one motherfucker who I w- I could say he stole from me and really did like as far as people that I knew. We all got a situation where somebody did you wrong on a certain level. The person that did me wrong on the shadiest level was the queen of clubs. It was a queen of a very passive aggressive queen of clubs. The person that did me the shadiest was the queen of clubs. But at the same time, the person in my life with the most integrity that has the most, that gives me the most support, she's the queen of clubs. My sister. My sister's my best friend. Uh, it's, it, ain't, it ain't no getting, it ain't getting no, you don't, you don't get cool. You, you can't get as close to siblings as you can with me and my sister. I, <clears throat> I love my sister. But my brother's the queen of clubs also. I mean, him still, we don't have the same, we don't communicate as much because he quiet and I talk a lot. But me and my brother are still very close. Like me and my brother and my sister, the two people who are the, who like really raised me, my brother and my sister, I was raised by queen of clubs. My brother showed me how to really confront the world. My sister showed me how to deal with the world. I'm the youngest of three. And I and I was my my, my 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 brother and my sister are both queen of clubs. So the two most trusted people, people I trust the most in my life, are also queen of clubs. Excuse me. They're also queen of clubs. But the shadiest nigga I know on earth is also a queen of clubs. That's why I say these are cards that when you do a reading, you gotta really get into the essence of who you read. Because you can't just generalize based on somebody's card. I've heard people ask me that, like, oh, if I'm that card, that means I must be that way. No. Hell no. Just because I know your card don't mean I know how you are. Until we tap in for a reading. Then I'm going to get into exactly who you are. But just walking around nilly, willy, nilly. When it comes to my readings, I'm different. The reason why you want my readings is because I don't, even though I have books all around, I don't have books out when I read. My stuff comes, I, I use card. Once I see your card, your card taps into me. And I speak to you, and I talk to you on what your card is telling me specifically for you. You can't really generalize with these card readings. I ain't about to be in somebody's reading talking about some music. This is, this is one of my card books. I'm not going to be in a reading talking about some. Well, uh, your birthday is June 17th. Let me go ahead and look that up. Mm-hmm. Well, you is a king of clubs. I ain't, nigga, I ain't doing all that. Nigga. Fuck that shit. When I read, spirit talking, nigga. But I see it right there. That seven hearts in J. Cole. That's where he wants to push the boundaries, but he's not comfortable pushing the boundaries. That's why if I were reading J. Cole, I would tell him to look into Kendrick because Kendrick, Kendrick is a king of clubs. That's that's J. Cole's shadow self. That King of Clubs is his shadow. Oh, shit, I got my automatic lights turning on behind me. Turn them hoes off. That's his shadow. Oftentimes, in order to get the best you want out of yourself, you got to lean into your shadow. The side of yourself that you're running from, that you're avoiding. See, King Kendrick Lamar, his Saturn is the Eight of Hearts. So that means he's all about exposure. The King of Clubs love exposing. Hell, I, I know. <laughs> Me and Steve Coakley. I think Steve Coakley is the person I'm proudest to share a birthday with. I, 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 out of all the people that's, birth, that's born June 17th, there's nothing about Gemini's. Gemini's, we some exposure ass niggas. We don't win. Well, fuck that, nigga. We see some shit, we gonna say some shit. Prince, Kendrick, Kanye, Ice Cube, nigga, go down the list. Steve Coakley, Gemini, see some shit, we gonna say some shit. Fuck out of here. Any at King of Clubs? Yeah, we go by Zodiac too, Achilles Smith. 
because your zodiac sign determines how your card plays out. Your zodiac it, 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 that influences your card. You dig what I'm saying? See, J. Cole is an Aquarius. And see, Aquarius, Aquarius like coming together. They want everybody, that's nothing that plays into it. I'm glad you asked that question in the chat room, Achille. Because J. Cole's Aquarius plays a lot into how his Queen of Clubs plays out. Because Aquarians like coming together they like peace, harmony, and love and all that shit. Geminis, however, are going to don't give a fuck. If it ain't right, they're going to say it. Yeah, Tupac, Gemini, yeah. Look at Geminis, we some line stepping. Don't give a fuck how you feel. If it ain't right, I ain't fucking with it, ass niggas. So your sign definitely plays a role in how your card plays out. And the queen of clubs are the king of clubs. Those cards appear in every month. See. When you look at J. Cole's, his, uh, his Mars card is a three of diamonds. Three of diamonds likes to step over, like it likes to stir up conflict but mars is challenge so he he had that shows you where that's where his challenge is stirring the conflict but ooh, go back to what i was saying earlier see when i'm reading your card the mars card tells me where your challenges are and three of diamonds is a rebel rouser it likes to stir up trouble and start shit. but as a queen of clubs queen of clubs have with that three of diamonds being in mars that means his personality type has an issue with stirring up stuff. And with him being a an Aquarius, that means he naturally leans towards communal and harmony and peace. That's where J. Cole has to understand in Jupiter his rewards are an ace of spades. Ace of Spades is a card that allows you to be who what you want to be. It's the card of the hidden secrets, hidden personalities. Ace of Spades hides its true intentions. So what that tells me is, if I'm reading J. Cole, if I'm if I'm with him for a reading, you got to understand that who you are as a performer and who you are as a man are two different things. And in order to get some of the most you can out of yourself as an artist, you might have to adopt a personality that's bigger than you, that's outside of yourself. And I'm not here to say that's easy. That's hard to do sometimes because the Queen of Clubs is a personality that likes to be itself. It likes to be itself. It's not like a person that's a a person that's like a five of hearts or a ten of diamonds. They can they can or five of clubs. They can booty wham and just jump into different personality styles like it's nothing. Queen of Clubs and the King of Clubs likes to be itself. But the Queen of Clubs sometimes has to step outside of itself to really get the most out of it. Lean into its shadow self and its shadow self is a King of Clubs. Now the King of Clubs ain't got no Ace of Spades nowhere in this deck. So the King of Clubs um, is going to approach it a little bit different. Like Okay. Let me see, you say, what car, let me see, what car he said. Yeah, Queen of Clubs doesn't really flash. The card itself, most Queen of Clubs aren't flashy. The Queen of Clubs are about law and order. They're about things being in the right place. They're about substance and having shit in order and making things you know, they're more substantive. But they do like to look a certain way, especially Queen of Clubs women. They're not going to go all the way out there like a, say, a two of hearts or seven of hearts. 
but that seven hearts means that you know but when it comes to them well we go back to what you said them not liking um the flash that's your flash is in your venus when if, if, if your question your samurai shows question was about and shows one of my car students um that five of clubs you want to know someone's flash how they confront the world that's always in their venus card venus tells you how people confront the world and how and their lifestyle and if you if you if you're out there reading somebody you want to know how to appeal to their ego you read their venus card and that's a five of clubs see that's where he's not Staunch fives mean they can go any way. They're very supremely talented. Like it really comes down to how he's feeling. Would it be in the five of clubs? That would more so go into how honestly how you were raised. Because fives can go anywhere. So now that now more your nature nurture plays into it. Your nature is go anywhere. Now your nurture comes into it. You know. Were you raised to where material things mattered or not, or didn't? That's where that's going to play into. Because when it comes into the cards, that's why you just can't be re relying on nature and nurture play work together. You have a certain nature, but how you were raised, how you were, your environment you were in. Uh, shit, appreciate you, Jasmine. Appreciate the cash app. Thank you for the cash app, Jasmine. Um, how you were raised and how you were cultivated and how your experiences in life that plays a large part in the how your cards play out too okay so don't ever just get so caught up in the spiritual that you forget that we live on earth and your natural earth upbringing how you were raised the values that were instilled into you by your family those also play a part in how your cards play out. Okay. Kendrick's Venus card is a four of hearts. So that tells you whatever he does has to lead towards emotional satisfaction and harmony. He's about harmony. And a lot of King Clubs are about harmony. But they'll, the Mercury card, let's go into the Mercury card. The Mercury card is how you communicate. J. Cole is a ten of spades. So that's a card that he got to present value. He, he believes in presenting value without a whole lot of fluff. Queen of Clubs. Queen of Clubs likes to go right in, in showing you the value of the ten, the ten of spades Mercury card. Ten of spades is all about substance. It's about hard work. It's about putting in the work. It's about the like getting a value. Kendrick Lamar's Venus uh, Mercury card, his communication card is the Jack of Diamonds. The Jack of Diamonds is playful, is skillful with his words, is witty, is funny. It's, it's very much so the card of uh, saying what it ever needs to say to get whatever it wants to get. By either by wit and by charm, usually. Wit and charm is the key to the Jack of Diamonds and the Venus in, in, in your Mercury card. What do you think air signs have in common? They huff and puff and do a whole lot of goddamn talking. That's what one thing air signs have in common. <laughs> air signs like to yap, yap, yap. Now, I'm just not saying all of y'all, but air signs like to talk, goddammit. I'm an air sign. He's some talking motherfuckers or expressive. If, if it's not straight up talking, it's, it's rapping, it's singing, it's some kind of communication. But yeah, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's interesting. So I'm going to close out by saying I, I did say I'm going to take calls, but I ain't taking no calls, nigga. I'm about to. I'm about to I'm about to chill. I've been working all fucking day, man. I'm about to actually be off. Um oh yeah, last reading. Get your readings at breakthroughcards.com. Relationship readings. 
all of that stuff. You, you can get your readings right now if you're interested in what I'm doing. Uh, BreakthroughCards.com. Um, sign up for my my email list. I'm about to send an email, a discount uh, through email. For, for everybody's on the email list. I'm going to send you guys a reading discount, a one-time reading discount. Um, for people that sub, that subscribe to my email uh, list. Um, yeah, and so that's one thing about you know what we're doing here. Um, so, but J Cole, like Kendrick, this this whole thing, we as a people got to understand that you can go at it musically and still respect people as a person, as a man, as an artist. Battling in music is just makes the music better. That's really what it does. That's really all it's about. It's about making the best music. Other people, they're going to make money off our music anyway. That's what happens when you're a captive group of people dealing with a system of white supremacy. We have to defeat the system. This isn't about us fighting each other. This isn't about us going at different groups of black people. You know what I mean? We can beef and get back on track. We could do that. Like I always say, Bird killing Hamilton did not stop the United States from being constructed. Beefs are just part of the, what, what goes on. It just is what it is, okay? Let us all sit back and watch it, be entertained by it, have a good time, but know that us as black people, no, our fortunes are not hinged on what our celebrities are doing. Celebrities can do all the weirdest, whacked out shit they want to do. So the fuck what? We, us rank and file, regular folks, got to stay focused on the mission. And while we focus on the mission, it's good to take some time out for some fun, some, some refreshment, and have a good time. Hit the gossip blogs and laugh a little bit. Relax. That's why even in war, the United States has the USO tour, where they allow their soldiers to get entertained by the world's best comedians and singers. Because even in wartime scenarios, you need time to goof off and laugh at other people's problems for a little bit. The key is to not stay there. Have a good time, laugh at it, learn from it, Grow from it. You dig what I'm saying? And then get back to doing what the fuck you gotta do. Is that a deal? Is that a deal? Alright. So... You know, salute to Kendrick, salute to J. Cole. I ain't got no issues with J. Cole. I just be talking shit about his music. I ain't got no issues with that, brother. I got nothing but love and respect for him. He makes good music at a high level. It ain't my style of music. But who the fuck am I? We all got our own different styles of music that we like and don't like. And, you know, we should be able to express that. And we should, we should, we have freedom to like, like, we like, it. you know, choose one particular celebrity over the other it's just all fun it's, it's fun it's fun don't feel guilty about it just have a little bit of time for fun and then get back to the business of doing what the fuck you know you need to do and be constructive and win and make sure that instead of waiting for celebrities to, to, to stop they beefs nigga stop your beefs with people nigga call that person you know you need to call that you did wrong you stole from somebody Make it right. You lied to somebody, go back and tell them the truth. You lied about somebody, go go and correct your wrong. You be the nigga you want these rappers to be. I don't want Kendrick Lamar to show black America and show the world what black folks can do, nigga. How about I live my life that way? And when I fuck up, cause I will, when I do something wrong and I contradict myself, cause I will, we all are hypocrites on some levels and we're con contradictory on some levels. We all stumble and fall short and make fuck-ups. The 
kids and not keep fucking up. Fuck up, learn from it, and be like, man, I ain't gonna do that shit again. And then next time, fuck up doing something different. <laughs> Just don't have the same fuck ups twice. That's all. All right. Thank y'all again for listening. I appreciate y'all. Get your readings and, and um, sign up at thewannabe.com for um, my, and go to, go to my Patreon. We're going to have some in, in, interviews dropping pretty soon. Go to patreon.com. Support the movement. Support everything we got going on here. All right? Thank y'all for listening. And I will do a reading show later on this week. All right? But remember for now, there are no perfect messengers. Only perfect messages for those willing to pick up the game. I'm out.